Welcome to day three of Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are at Challenge Penticton, Lake Okanagan. Behind me, we are based at the Hooded Merganser. This is a Canadian multi-sport national championship, site of the 2017 ITU World Championship, six world championship events over 10 days. Uh, my guest, Sarah Gross. So, Sarah, being from Hi. Canada, mm -hmm. pretty cool to be back here in Penticton. It's amazing to be back in Penticton. This is where I was inspired, basically, to do triathlon, was here in Penticton. So, From all the legends. Yes. Lord Bowden, Heather Fuhr, Pete Yes, Reed. Lisa Bentley, Pete. Yeah, they all had great results here. You know, I read about it in the magazines yeah. before I ever came here. So, um Really, Penticton is is special to me, and I'm one of those pros who, you know, lived here for a year. I know a number of Canadian yeah. pros kind of did the move to Penticton for a year thing. I, I also did that, so it is uh, it's kind of home to me. So besides the race this weekend, Wine, Women, and Sports, talk a little bit about your event here. Yes, we're doing a Wine, Women, and Sport event. Myself and Canadian Olympian Silken Lauman okay. um, are both speaking, and shockingly, they, they sold out the event why it's, is that shocking it's Hello. this afternoon i i don't know i was i was um yeah really pleased to hear that and um it's in it's down lakeshore drive uh this yeah. afternoon and we're going to be saying some inspiring things and drinking wine <laughs> now are you seeing I, I, when i look at the marathon scene the marathon and half marathon scene is 60 to 65 percent women Mm -hmm. right? That's changed the whole game when it comes to who's coming to the expo, the, the, the amount of stuff that's bought at the expo. Triathlon is, I think, in the, in the shorter distances, is a little higher percentage. Yes. It, what do we need to do to get more women in the longer distance races? You know, I'm not always sure that everything's about equal participation, if that makes sense. Sure. So we're not, we don't always need to strive for 50-50. If people just aren't interested in doing something, they shouldn't have to. Right. But, but I think having equal access and opportunity is the most important thing. Okay. Right? So, um, so for women to have, you know, th you know that I'm a big part of the 50 Women to Kona yes. issue. Um, that's important to me. Um, I think that, you know, less women are likely to do Ironman because, you know, they're, they sometimes make, women sometimes make different choices at certain points in their sure. lives about... Um, I don't know about having kids or have different priorities. And if those people want to do a sprint event instead, yes. you know, it, it, it shouldn't always necessarily have to be about equal numbers, just equal access. What's interesting to me is, is over the years, uh, for a long time, I always felt the women cycling were spin classes, right? Because yeah. you know, a lot of women come to spin classes. Why? Because they're a great workout, but it's also safe. It's safer. Uh, I, yeah. I think guys don't hesitate to say, oh, it's middle of the day. I'm going to go for a bike ride. It's good yeah. for a woman to go out there with with people on the roads and their cars, and it's just it seems safer for guys. Totally, than and it if does we're going to talk about cycling, yes. I mean, the, in terms of the macho attitude, oh. if if we're going to take one of our three sports, <laughs> I think cycling is going to lose on on that front in terms of how welcoming it is, and then maybe right. a spin class is more welcoming at, at least now things are changing yes so i'm not going to be completely like betty downer about everything but well, it is changing well you think about it you know what other sport I mean, you think about it, triathlon was built on equality right Absolutely. The, the, the first woman to do iron man lynn lamare finished fifth overall and was actually leading on the bike at one point had right. like the second fastest bike split of the day so we've sort of been built on that over the years our first race directors were valerie sill yeah. and sharon ackles and diana birch so and the way the itu built, yes. it, built yes. things up too was very much Equal. based on the idea that to get into the olympic games yes. you had to have you had to have women in so many countries participating in your sport, right. and that was really important to getting the games or uh, into the Olympics. Sorry, triathlon yes. into the Olympics. Yes. yes, yeah. So along those same lines, I, I, I'm always fascinated by your background because you grew up in Canada. You were in, I think, Scotland for high school. Scotland. Don't forget the Middle East. Yes, stuck in the middle Dubai, there. Right, yeah. You were in Dubai, right? <laughs> yeah. How long did you live in Dubai? I lived there for two years, and then for a number of years after that, I went back in the winters to train. Yeah. Um, so I used to train with Ferris El Sultan and his German crew out yes. on the roads in Alain in, in United Arab Emirates. So it's, um, uh, yeah, I have a lot of experience in the Middle East. So when you became part of the Bahrain endurance team uh, this last year, that had to be almost like a little homecoming to a certain degree. Absolutely. I felt that. 
that. Yeah. You know, I, I think I'd seen all these teams kind of come and go. Um, and I always wondered about them, what's going on on the inside of them. Sure. I knew a little bit from Ferris and, and dealing with some of the shakes over there and, right. and stuff like that. And their interest in the sport and how that changes the attitudes of people in their countries. You know, I, that's something I've really noticed since being part of the team that um, His Highness Sheikh Nasser, since yes. he took up triathlon, how many people in that country took up triathlon? Because they emulate shakes. It's like a celebrity. Yes. Right? So here... You know, um, I used the example the other day of, um, of you know, if a celebrity has a certain haircut, Everybody and then wants we emulate it. it. Yeah, it yeah. It's, it's a really similar culture with the shakes there. So when His Highness took up triathlon, you had en masse people starting to participate in Bahrain. Um, so it's a really interesting phenomenon, and that continues. That's been three years now. It continues. So when you joined that team, was part of the reason, hey, I, uh, there's obviously more that can be done for women. Mm -hmm. in the Middle East and in the UAE and specifically in Bahrain. And, and, and have you been encouraged to do that? Yes, um, both. Yes, I was I was actually, I had sort of a, an interest in that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to find out more about women in the Middle East and their participation, especially for covered women and women who w didn't necessarily have as many opportunities as, yes. um, as people, as, you know, the richer men in their country, right? right? So I kind of wanted to go and find out, and that's still a project that's in process. I've, I've talked to a lot of women, I've done a lot of interviews, and there's more to be done because I, I, I just want to know that I want to have that information, and it's kind of yeah. leaking out a little bit in some writing that I'm doing and stuff like that. So a couple years ago, I was over in Abu Dhabi, mm. and they've got a Formula One track there, and mm -hmm. what I loved is one night a week, they open the track up for people to run, because it's very dangerous on the roads there, to run and ride and walk mm -hmm. for everybody and then another night was specifically for women right where they blocked off the windows so people couldn't see what was going on inside and women could come out and actually participate and the numbers were staggering you're getting like a thousand women and you know, right uh, and it's it, it, yes it shows that the interest is there yeah. you know when i was in dubai earlier in the year i interviewed a woman who started the first women's running she's a local woman in yes. dubai and she started the first women's running group there and she thought no one would come she put it on Instagram and said, let's meet and run here, ladies. And, and 50 people showed up. Just, right? yeah. and, and how they worked through. Interestingly, it was the first time they had worked through as Emiratis, you know, what they were going to wear. Um, and they were able yes. to meet and talk about it. And she said they now wear, like they wear long sleeve hoodies, light ones. They all know the brands of what well, that work. Wear. Yeah, yeah. But that, that actually happened. That's recent. You know, that's within the last two years that's happening. That. So, yeah, it's really cool. Well, and, and sometimes we forget because the, the sport of triathlon can be a very selfish endeavor, right? Because mm. you're, you're putting in mindless mo numbers of hours for running, cycling. Uh, yeah. You're just, you're looking at a black line all day long. Yeah. But this sport does change things, right? It's a sport that, that can be uh, that can be life altering for for adults and children. One of the issues in in the Middle East is something that you don't think about is the the diabetes issue, the, mm -hmm. the people, the morbid obesity. Yeah, and our sport really fits well in the getting these folks out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think the difference, and you brought up running near the beginning here. Yes. That the, the difference with running is that running's just slightly more accessible. Way and so accessible. that's yeah. what we have the same we kind of have the same thing that running does in terms of being mass participation yeah. but we need to work just that little bit harder to make it accessible so people can have access to bikes like you say in Abu Dhabi on the Formula One track so that you have a place where covered women can come and ride their bikes right. or run um, so you have a few more accessibility issues especially with swimming too sure. if we're going to talk about women in the Middle East um, but even here you know, not everyone can afford a bike. So, right. you know, those are things that we as a sport need to continue to be on top of. Um, but I think we have lots of opportunities to do that. Uh, since you started the whole, you know, 50, 50 women to Kona, there certainly have been some changes at Ironman with their Women to Try program. Mm -hmm. With I love the fact that next year in Chattanooga, one day for the 70.3 Worlds will be all men. And mm -hmm. one day will be all women, right? Yep. So there'll be as many pros as, as can get there, I'm guessing. Uh, what are your thoughts? So, yes, I think it's great that they're trying this two-day uh -huh. event. Um, the, one of the issues I had with Chattanooga is that they had an opportunity to have an equal number of women, pros and age groupers, uh -huh. on the start line on the Saturday, as they will men on the Sunday. Right. And they're not taking that opportunity. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm not really sure why... Um, 
Uh, Andrew Messick did say in an interview that the number of pros will be equal. So that's okay. progress. And I'm, I'm not going to knock them. Sure. Th that's great progress. Um, but at the same time, I felt like it was a bit of an opportunity lost there. Yeah. So we'll see what happens next. I mean, they're, they're, they're moving. It's just slow. So let, let's talk a little racing for, for you. Because, uh, racing, yes, yeah. Yes. 2014, you went Ironman Brazil and Ironman Mount Blanc back in 05. You won the ITU European Long Distance Champs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about where your racing is now and what, what are your goals. Yeah, you know, racing's different for me now. I have different reasons to, uh, to be out there. Um, I definitely feel like, you know, I have, I have a five-year-old daughter, yeah. you know, so I feel like my training's not as much a priority, but I do still love to race. I love being out there representing, re representing Bahrain, but representing Tri-Equal and 50 Women to Kona. Right. Um, so that's a lot of where my heart is at right now with the racing. And, but I am still racing and I've had a couple injuries um, and touch wood there. Everything's sort of cleared up now. Yeah. I've broken a few bones and... I'm back in training, and I'm excited to be starting to feel fit again. What's, what, when you look back, what was either the best race or the race that meant the most to you in your career? Such a hard question. That's why I'm here. I know. That's and why I, I think I'd probably give a different answer every <laughs> time. So I think you asked me this before, I did, and yeah. I can't even remember what my answer was then because there's so That's many. That's good. But, you know, Ironman Mont Tremblant yes. was really, really special. Being um, a Canadian. Yeah, being a Canadian, winning on home soil. Um, that was kind of my goal from the start when I started when I first started the sport yeah. um, was to kind of win a Canadian Ironman and Mont Tremblant is a very special place and yeah. such a supportive community of the race there. So, right. um, so I think that was, that was pretty darn special. What I like is obviously we've gone through some changes here. This was Ironman Canada mm. for years and years and years that it became challenged, struggled. I love the concept of six world championships next year over 10 days. Yes. I think that's huge. Yes. This year, dress rehearsal, four events over five days. As, as somebody who's from Canada, w when you look at where the challenge uh, Penticton is going, what are your thoughts? Oh, I love what's happening here in Penticton. You can feel the difference in the vibe. Yeah. Right? When they announced that the ITU was having the world, that, that World Triathlon Festival here next year, it increased the interest. And what Challenge is doing is amazing with the multi day festival, yep. uh, with the cross triathlon, duathlon, aquathlon, all of the above. Yes. Um, it's more like European style yes. of having a triathlon festival. We're missing that in North America. And I think I, I'm. I think it can take off. I think there's interest in that. And I know in our in the club that I run in Victoria, yeah. we have we have I think we have something like 25 people racing here. It's a record. I mean, it's more than raced at in the 70.3 race in Victoria. Wow. It, it's amazing. So people really are getting on board and supporting what's going on here and doing there's so many options right so you can yes. come here with the whole family and everyone can do a race on a different day and everyone's happy and you can do multiple days <laughs> exactly <laughs> were you conflicted at all when you were offered the opportunity to go on Bahrain endurance mm -hmm. because of the sheik's background and some of the you know the the, the charges that have been placed against him over yeah the years? absolutely i mean that was a really tough decision for me yeah. to make um i did a lot of research in terms of what we actually no, I read pretty much everything at sure. the time that was out there about this situation. And I think that, that the allegations against the Sheikh are, are allegations. And it never kind of went past that. Okay. Um, and so I didn't really want to be judge and jury of that. But I really wanted to be on board with what was happening in triathlon in Bahrain. Yes. Right? So that was my, you know, I knew I was going to get some... So push a back, back from yeah, the yeah, media yeah. and I yep. was going to have to deal with that and not everyone was going to follow me through into my choice and and that was fine with yes. me um, because this was a direction I wanted to go in my life I wanted to go, you know go back to the Middle East and continue that as that's part of I feel like it's part of me yes you know being in the Middle East so um, yeah I I, uh, I was definitely conflicted but now how the year has gone so far I feel like I made the right decision it really all comes down to for me whether or not I feel like I can make a difference in the situation that I'm right that I'm right, in, right? Um, and so I mean you can look I at the past you can look at the past or uh, and but you can say okay can I have an impact on right. changing the future is there something I could do here that I that I really want to do and the answer to that was yes um, so and, and when you look at the Middle East now and Bahrain in particular you feel like you guys are headed in the right direction. Yeah, I think the team has um, definitely rallied around the idea of getting more involved in Bahrain itself. There's some exciting plans happening 
for the race there, the week yes. leading up to the race. Uh, so I'm excited to be part of that and, and see what happens. There. So what are those? Nobody's watching, so she can tell us. You can share those <laughs> those double <laughs> secret plans. The secret it's not plans. a problem. Well, yeah. I think until I think there's about there's an event every day leading up. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But until we have confirmation from sponsors and other things, it's, uh, you it's, keep it's on the down low oh, there, yeah, Bob. So on Sunday, will you be? participating i will be participating um i'm hoping to get some kind of quote-unquote training session in um i want to test my fitness there are some really good women on the start line oh yeah but i'm excited to see right race local girl jen annette have you talked to her i talked to jen yesterday and karen thibodeau karen so jen's brought her bike game up uh this ton, year right? yeah. so i'm excited to see what she can do especially at a home race yes um oh karen by the way yes when she got your email well, we were sitting she, karen lives in my basement Wait, wait, she lives in your basement? <laughs> yes. She, Karen's one of my best friends. She's my training partner. And she said, who's this Bob guy? And why does he want to have breakfast with me? <laughs> I love that. It's great. That is very funny. Yeah. Who is that loser? And why right? is he, who's the stalker guy? <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. So the, the plan for you on race day? Because I know you've been dealing with some injuries. Yeah, the plan for me is just to execute kind of a hard swim bike. Yes. Um, and then see what happens. Okay, will you tr start the run or are you, what, what are you dealing oh, with? Oh, I'm not, I'm not I, I did break, I mean, I, it was a, most recently it was a broken wrist. Okay. So I don't have any running excuses per se, besides right. just general fitness. Okay. That over, and I'm training, <coughs> excuse me, I'm training for halves right now. So we'll see this will be a this will be a big training day for me rest of the season what are, what are the plans um i'm gonna do some 70.3s um maybe in mexico some yeah. of the ones in the southern u.s um and then i'm headed to bahrain in december love that mm -hmm. always a pleasure sarah yes always love thank chatting you, bob. With you yeah good to chat to you too and who is that breakfast with bob guy and why the heck who, does he want to have breakfast with me why the heck does he want to have breakfast with me this stalker <laughs> <laughs> the stalker loser guy. I love that. Again, this is Breakfast with Bob. This is where we're challenge Penticton at the Hooded Merganser. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back.